let's look at analyzing and constructing antiderivatives. So remember that I mentioned in the last video lecture, if you paid attention, that the capital f of x is the original function and the lower f of x is the actual derivative. Okay, I know you're used to seeing that little prime, but how they write it is if you took the derivative of this function, okay, that's what this piece is, that is the derivative. Without the prime, it's called the antiderivative, the original function. So just as we had shortcuts for derivatives, guess what? We're going to have shortcuts for antiderivatives. So what I'm going to tell you is x squared is an antiderivative of 2x. Okay, kind of makes, kind of makes sense, hopefully. But the problem is, is there are other functions, okay, there are other functions that have the derivative of 2x. Why, you might ask? Remember about the shifting up and down the vertical axis. Remember what x squared looks like. You know what x squared looks like? You know what x squared looks like? I'm trying to find, trying to find a plane for right here. x squared, hello, looks like that, right? Well, the only thing that happens is when you do the plus 5 is all you've done is vertically moved it up the axis or negative uh, minus 17, moved it down the axis, and so on. So the problem is, is you can't just always say that there is this one function. So what we do is we use plus some constant. So the C just says that we can say that x squared plus C, okay, is an antiderivative. This is the original function. If I took the derivative of this function, what's the derivative of x squared? You hadn't forgotten that by now, have you? Bring the 2 down, pass it around, minus 1. And the derivative of a constant, 0. So that's why the constant doesn't matter the value, and we just put plus c. All right, as I mentioned, there are going to be uh, formulas. So let's see if we can figure out a pattern. Like if I wanted to know the antiderivative of x, I'm going to tell you it's x squared over 2. And you will say, genius, how did you know that? Well, if I take the derivative of this, it gives me back this function. So what's kind of cool that you already know how to do derivatives, you can check these. So if I said the antiderivative of x squared is x cubed over 3, take the derivative, bring the 3 down, the 3's cancel, subtract 1, aha! How about x to the third? I'm going to tell you it's x to the fourth over 4, because if I take the derivative, bring the 4 down, that cancels, subtract 1, Beautiful, 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 beautiful. So it looks like, hopefully, you see a pattern. Hopefully. Okay, so the pattern, which once again, this is just a formula. If you think about when you took a derivative, what did you do? What would Cindy do? You brought this power down, right, remember? And you subtracted one. Think about how you would do the opposite. Notice what is happening, okay, so the subtract one, notice what's happening over here, that's where we're adding one to that power, and whatever you do up here ends up with the same at the bottom. So if we wanted to go through some examples, so it's time to get ready to write, get your, get your hands on your, 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 your tablets, your pencils, anybody use pencils anymore, pencils, all that good stuff? And let's see if we can figure out how to do these based off of that formula. So you should write that formula down right now. Um, let me mention while I'm right here, and I've mentioned this before as well, please remember that little S looking thing, if I can get my, my pencil to write, that little S looking thing is the integral sign. Integral sign. And it says, Okay, what this means after it is take this derivative, because that is the derivative, and find the original function based off of the variable x. So you're going to see when we do these, the d of x part just gets canceled out. All right, so let's do these. So back here, find this antiderivative. If you wrote down, if you wrote down that formula, you should be able to answer this right now. Can you answer it? I think I add one to the top, 
and whatever same thing gets added here on the bottom. So x to the fifth plus one over five plus one, x to the sixth over six. Now, if you were smart, and you're all smart because you're my students, you're smart, right? If you were smart, you would check this. How could you check it? Well, take the derivative of what you found. Uh, notice that plus C. Remember we said we need a constant. What's the derivative of x to the 6? Well, you bring the x, the x, you bring the 6 down and you subtracted 1. That 6 is still there on the bottom. And then the derivative of the constant is 0. Would you looky, 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 looky there? If you took the time, this is kind of back, remember when you were in algebra? Oh, the good old days of algebra. And you were asked to check your work and nobody ever did. You could do the same thing here and check these. Most of them, you can look at them. All right, let's try another one. Find the antiderivative, find the original function of t to the eighth. I think it's going to be t to the ninth plus nine, over nine. Right? Eight plus one, eight plus one, and then plus c. Remember, you're, and a lot of students ask this every semester, well, what do you do with the dt? You don't do anything with it. Um, what's happening when you're taking these antiderivatives, all that dt is telling you the variable of interest with respect to that variable. All right, what if we have a constant? So, in other words, what if I want to know the antiderivative of 3, just a number? Well, think about it. This is the derivative of some function. Wouldn't that function be 3x because the derivative of 3x is 3? Aha! All right, so all you're doing is just putting the actual variable on it. So find the antiderivative of 12dx. Got your answer? Yeah, buddy. 12x plus c. Um, this is kind of what you saw me do, you know, in the past where I said, I don't really do this. I kind of sort of do, but you could split up functions. So that's all this is saying. You can pull coefficients out front, all that kind of good stuff. So if I had something that looked like this and I wanted to really, really try to figure out what the heck is going on here, what I could do is I could rewrite this in pieces. And that's what that last slide was showing. Again, I don't really do this, but you could, right? So you're now saying we'll find this antiderivative, which would be, there's a one there, right? One plus one over one plus one. And then find this antiderivative, which would be two plus one over two plus one. And then, of course, adding these together. I, hello, didn't mean to hit that. I would get my actual answer. Okay, so 3x to the second power over 2, x to the third over 3. So as you're going to see, you're going to learn, just as you did with derivatives, you're going to get a lot of these problems, okay, given to you, that you want to get to a point you can look at this and say q to the fourth over 4 minus 6q to the 3 over 3, and then of course you could reduce if possible. That's where you want to get with this power rule. I know it's going to be a little confusing for a while because you're used to bringing the power down and subtracting one. That's finding the derivative. We're finding antiderivatives. Just as there were special rules for um, logs and E, guess what? The antiderivative of 1 over x is ln of x. Why? Because if I take the derivative of ln of x, aha, that's what I get. You'll still love your e to the x, the antiderivative of e to the x, e to the x. So that one works both ways with derivatives, antiderivatives. Here, looking at an e to the kx, think about when you took the derivative, you brought the k down, so that's why you're having to divide it here. Okay, so let's look at some of these examples. If I have something that looks like this, the first piece is a power. 8x to the 4th over 4, and the next piece based on your definition. So you see you're going to have to start another formula sheet, okay, with these antiderivatives on it. Um, here's the 12e to the kt. So I know I'm going to have to divide over here by, shout it out if you know it, 0 0.2. Okay, I just threw the 12 out front. So in fact, that's what it's showing on that one screen, once again, what I could do is I could rewrite this as 12 
find the antiderivative of this piece. And that's why you're seeing the 12 being brought out front. As I know you, you are excited and you can't wait, but hey, Cindy, what about trig functions? I'm so happy you asked. Guess what? There's trig functions. This students really get confused because what is the derivative of cosine, negative sine? What is the antiderivative? Ah, oh, because the derivative, remember you're working backwards. The derivative of sine is cosine. What's the derivative of cosine? Negative sine, hence the negative here. A negative and a negative is a positive. What's happening down here is this is dividing out the chain rule piece, okay? So that's, that's why you see that one over K on the bottom is it's dividing out when you took the derivative of the inside, the chain rule. So something that looks like this, I just go look at my formulas, sine, okay, negative cosine, see that right there? Three, just put it out front. The cosine of 5x, that looks like this right here, sine of 5x, and the 5 comes on the bottom. Okay, so these take a little practice, okay, to be able to, be able to do these. So practice them, get your formula sheets ready, and I'm sure you will be fine. Now, we keep talking about, um, you know, this plus c, this plus c, this plus c. If you're given something that looks like this, and it's, it tells you ahead of time that f of 0 equals 0, all right? So when the original function, x, when x equals 0, then the whole function equals 0. All right, so the first thing I need to do is find this antiderivative. And again, you could, uh oh again, you could do this. You could put the 4 out front. What is the antiderivative of e to the x? Well, it's just e to the x. And then plus C. You probably saw I got a little lazy on some of them last ones with the plus C's. And now what this is saying up here, this function equals zero when X equals zero. Solve for C. Be careful. It's not always zero because remember anything to the zero power is one. So it looks like chunking the four to the other side that your final answer here would be 4e to the x minus 4. So there's going to be lots of practice problems on these. Practice, 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 practice. Make me proud, please. I'm here if you need me.